neighborhoods define our character. They set the course for our understanding of the world around us. They help determine how you treat me and how I treat you. They predict our longevity and in some cases may even expedite our mortality. If this is true, there is a crisis in the urban core. Urban neighborhoods are rapidly disappearing and along with them, those neighborhood cultural norms that help to define us. There's a virus in urban America, bulldozers. Bulldozers and cranes have a language of their own. And amazingly, we comprehend their messages without having ever taken a class in the subliminal languages of bulldozers and cranes. When we see cranes, they represent progress, excitement. They invite us to stay and watch. Bulldozers, on the other hand, have a much different effect. They indicate danger. I'm tearing down the old, the useless, the familiar. Step back before you get hurt. I noticed something about my neighborhood. There were plenty of cranes, bulldozers rather, but very, very few cranes. While running away from my hometown and searching for that golden city on a hill, you know, the one with an abundance of job opportunities, great neighborhoods, and hundreds of places to spend your hard-earned money, it dawned on me after I left how much I bragged about the city I once called home. How a Sunday after church grocery stop was often an opportunity to chat with music legends and athletes and Oscar-nominated actors. While on this tangent of my hometown is better than yours with some other transplants, someone asked, if your hometown was such a great place, why did you leave? Hmm. I left because those places that once gave me so much joy no longer exist. Well, after years of living in a city but not truly connected to it, I made the decision to return home. Now, I gotta be honest, I would love to say that I came home to fight the system, revitalize my community. The truth is, home is where babysitting is free. <laughs> so. Home for me at that time was Dayton's West Side, a predominantly urban minority community. And although happy to be home, I noticed something. My gas tank needed refilling often. And the miles of my car were increasing faster than I or my insurance company ever expected. Why? Because every place I needed to go existed somewhere else. Imagine waking up every day, and each day you have to leave familiar surroundings just to complete simple tasks. Hmm. Frustrated with the reality that I have become accustomed to driving 14 miles one way for dinner, nine miles for a cup of coffee, I recall my cultural exchanges as I patronized business establishments far away from my front door. There's the warm smell of, hi, we welcome diversity, or the frightened death stare of, please don't come any closer to me because if you do, I just piss on myself, look. <laughs> then there's the annoyance of, Constantly checking my speedometer and my headlights, making sure that everything is just right as I drive through those upscale neighborhoods. It all becomes overwhelming. How far would you drive for a cup of coffee? After thinking about this particular situation and going through these processes, I thought to myself, how did urban minority communities filled with hard workers who helped build the American dream become the backdrop of every major city's late night breaking news report. How did these communities who helped usher in the minority middle class adopt titles such as dilapidated, distressed, abandoned? Although I speak of my personal experiences, Rest assured, 
There's a quote unquote ghetto neighborhood near you as well. These communities, these communities epitomize the term that we try so hard to adhere to in America, diversity. They're black, brown, yellow, red and white. Yet the titles that are attached to them mask the great potential that exists within their boundaries. Like an antibiotic destroying the bad and the good. Bulldozers have destroyed the fruits of hard work, the dream of the great migration, and the hope of home ownership. These communities confuse a child who has to travel past dozens of abandoned homes just to get to his or her front porch. Now, we talk about preparing our children for a global society. How do we prepare our children for a global world with no neighbors to the left and no neighbors to the right? How does that child form a perspective of community? Dayton is a city of 65 neighborhoods, and we pride ourselves with the title, City of Neighbors. But there's a caveat. According to an opportunity mapping study published by county health officials, 31 of Dayton's 65 neighborhoods are categorized as lacking opportunity. Lacking opportunity in healthcare, housing, employment, access, education, and the list goes on and on. On and on. Amazingly, how do we call ourselves a city of, no, 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 scratch that. How do we call ourselves a nation of neighbors where almost half of our communities are categorized as unlivable. I cannot tell you that there is one prescription that will fit or fix every urban community that suffers from failed economic policies, lack of political leadership, resident hopelessness, and sincere disinterest in revitalizing such neighborhoods. But I can tell you, gentrification is not the answer. Frustrated with this reality, myself and two friends got together and thought about what could we do to help improve our community. After endless hours of conversations, tons and tons of research, and 200 residential members later, we formed an advocacy organization. Now, with this organization, we put together several initiatives, such as an aggressive demolition implementation policy where we build up as well as we tear down. Get vacant land properties out of the hand of convicted code violators and into the hands of responsible property owners and vested community land banks. Monitor and enforce corrective actions against those banking institutions who practice redlining in distressed communities. Banks should invest where their members live. <laughs> City and elected leaders are stewards of the public's trust in position to help all citizens. The continuation of lopsided development and declining urban neighborhoods must stop. Our declining neighborhoods are a homeland security nightmare, whether it be the next protest or the next tear shed from a president's eye. Neighborhoods help to keep us safe and secure. Let's get back to what makes us strong. It's, I get this right, it's our neighborhoods. <laughs>